What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're taking a look at Monster Hunter Wilds here on four different devices with the Claw, Steam Deck, Legion Go, and Ally X. And if you've been paying attention, this game, while I'm really loving it, has a ton of performance and optimization issues here at launch. I really suggest taking a look at Digital Foundry's recent video where Alex did a great job of breaking down issues with stutters, texture decompression, and streaming, and all kinds of issues with the game. So it's not a surprise that on these handhelds it can be pretty rough as well. But I will say out of all of them, the Claw's been the most playable but we're going to take a look at everything here and just show you my experience i'm also only running official drivers nothing side loaded on anything so everything's up to date as far as official drivers from the factories for all of these devices we can get into side loaded stuff in a future video now we'll start with the steam deck which will be 800p running on i believe it's the lowest or the low preset that we have here i believe it was the lowest for this one fsr on balanced to help out a little bit too it's a very gpu heavy game and then of course we have frame generation which we'll take a look at as well but really you're dealing with such a low base frame rate in most areas of the game especially like villages where if you get into populated areas where you are fighting a monster that isn't secluded in a little area and it's actually out with a bunch of other beast and stuff like that it gets pretty rough like this as well so you're not dealing with a very good base frame rate here from the steam deck with this game right now to even really do well with frame generation though you can kick it on you can set your gpu to 1600 if you need to and you can get double this frame rate out of it but it doesn't feel great and of course without frame gen with this lower frame rate doesn't feel great either my bigger problem is that the game crashes on me about every 10 minutes or 15 minutes like this whether i pause it or i sometimes i'm just in the middle of a fight i'll launch back in and go to do something or make a change or maybe kick in frame generation and it will just crash this happened to me over and over again trying to make the video which was making it difficult now of course it doesn't seem very playable anyway but i still wanted it to not crash so i could just test it out and see how it was doing but it did keep happening to me over and over again unfortunately now i did have a spot here in this fight though i was able to at least get frame generation turned on because i just was curious to see how it would do here uh running and it was fine like i said it would double the frame rate that we had but we're dealing with 15 to 25 fps depending on where you're at as our base frame rate making it feel pretty clunky and pretty rough so for me i'm not going to call it a playable experience but i do understand why some of you if this is the only device you have you may just be dealing with it and trying to get through it for now until you either get another device or patches come or whatever the case may be and i had another crash here trying to test frame generation in the other area so yeah it was a pretty rough experience for me at least so far on the steam deck and i really wouldn't recommend jumping into it on there unless you really have no choice and you know what you're getting into now the ally x actually offered some pretty playable performance but i do run into crash issues which i'll show you as well all the devices except for the claw were crashing and i think this has more to do with drivers again i'm running official drivers which can tend to be a couple months old they're december dated for the ally x and the legion go as to where the claw is running the newest intel driver because it gets the updates right away but you can see performance here around the village and stuff same idea when you're there you're going to get some pretty janky performance and lower frame rate typically though when you get out into the open world or you're fighting whatever the case may be it does hold a fairly stable frame rate at least better than i was expecting when we saw the benchmark before it is going to still go under 30 fps with the 720p low preset medium textures fsr balance 8 gigabytes of vram but i was surprised that it held it as often as it did which would mean that frame generation would actually help a little bit more now frame generation is really for 60 fps and up stuff to really get you what it's made for but if you're 30 to 40 and you're still kicking it in it will on these devices help a good bit which we'll be able to do here uh, in a minute but i went to different areas and tested this out and performance was pretty consistent from like 28 to 38 fps uh, with no fsr here with these settings but that brings us to the main problem, just like the Steam Deck and just like we'll see over on the Legion Go, I was running into these crashing issues as I was trying to tweak settings and get footage and kind of figure out what would work for the device. So it made it pretty frustrating and I didn't want to get too deep into like figuring out best settings just like the Steam Deck because honestly, it's just crashing too often for me. Frame gen would be pretty good on here and I think this device would actually be pretty playable and for some of you, it might be working fine or a side-loaded driver is fine and maybe I'll check that out and do another video but just for if you're running factory drivers and you're looking to play this, you might run into the same problems. Now over on the Legion Go, we're going to do the 800p, the same low preset with medium textures. We'll do FSR balance and we have 6 gigs of VRAM. Everything here should be fine. And ultimately, this device also, much like the Ally X being a Z1 Extreme, runs it 
okay now there's gonna be busy areas like this that just run horrible and with frame gen it'll be around 40 fps but it's gonna feel a little rough and you're gonna have more input latency because of how low your base fps is so just be aware um maybe the side loader driver does a little better but i think we're just getting up to the point here where you're just not going to run it much better when you have this much going on on the screen at one time um, but I did want to show that that's going to happen when you get away from really busy areas though, or you're just fighting something more solo, you'll stay up there usually above 30 FPS for the most part, which means if you throw frame gen on, which we'll do here in a minute, you're going to gain some FPS there. But yeah, frame times and things like that, it was actually surprisingly playable and I can get pretty used to that as long as it tries to stay above 30 FPS. Settings aren't the greatest, picture quality is not the cleanest, it is what it is, but we all know how bad the performance is for this game, the optimization is right now, so I'll take it if I can get it. Um, but yeah, anyway, frame gen on here, again, it's going to drop some frames and stuff like that, but it ultimately does work pretty decently, even though it's not made for lower frame rates like this as much. I think it works okay on these devices, and it feels fine as far as input latency and all that. I think I could get away with it here. But again, my main issue with the Go, just like the Steam Deck and the Ally X, I didn't get too deep into finding more settings and stuff like that because I ran into the same kind of crashing issues that I was getting there every 5, 10, 15 minutes. I'm just kind of playing the game, tweaking settings and that kind of thing, which was a shame because, again, I think performance is actually close to doable, at least not for everybody, but I think a lot of people would say, heck with it, I could probably do this on the Go from time to time, and I'm sure it'll improve over time with patches and all that. You can see here with frame generation, again, doubling the frame rate, doing a pretty good job. Additional input latency isn't too bad. You're always going to feel it, especially with low base FPS like that. But boom, I kept getting this crash uh, quite often here on the go, just like the Ally X, just like the Steam Deck. So you might want to be running side-loaded drivers for these devices. I have a guide for this new driver, actually, that they had put out for Wilds. Uh, I don't have it on my go right now for testing. I'm running the factory driver, but I'll put a link in the description if you want to go check that out and get into side loading uh, that. But I'll definitely be testing this game as we get more patches and, and trying it on all these devices again. Now for the MSI Claw, it's the only device I played on where I was able to play it without any crashing. I played about two hours straight without any problem. Um, I did have to do 800p. 1200p is too rough. I'll show you that. The game's just very heavy to run. I think you're getting the idea here throughout the video but yeah 1200p no matter what you do with the settings it just really isn't going to be doable here and frame gen is going to feel horrible with the base frame rate being that low so really you want to go 800p if you're on a claw trying to play this and you're going to want to use fsr from quality bouncer performance depending on what you prefer and what you're trying to get out of the frame rate and trying to keep it up above 30. i used a good bit of performance and balanced here i know it's not the best image quality but i was just trying to get the most playable frame rate I could with the low preset, medium textures, FSR performance. I didn't go high textures because just like in the Digital Foundry video, high textures are causing me more stutter on all the PCs, including my desktop, that I've tried that on. So we're going here and we'll change this over to 800p so we're not on the 1200. We're going to have our enabled FS or our um, frame generation on. You can see in this area with 800p frame gen on, those settings, things are actually pretty decent in this harder to run area where... You know, we're seeing teens and 20s on, on other devices. And again, it is a low frame rate for frame generation. I get that. But it does work pretty good on the device. And even in combat, I think, as far as input latency and all that, it wasn't that bad. I can easily adapt to the frame generation being on. And if you don't want to run it, for the most part, the claw will keep you above 30 FPS. It is still going to dip into the 20s from time to time. But you could certainly pull that off. This little beginning area, like tent area, a lot of people showed in videos for performance and stuff as well. And I think the claw, probably due to its newest driver, actually ran this spot the best. It still has its dips and stutters and issues and all that. But we can turn off frame gen here and we'll just go back to our base frame rate and then we'll, we'll be above 30 FPS here. Now, again, when you pan around, just like has been shown in other videos, it drops frames like crazy. This, I think, is another one of those like texture streaming compression type issues. I think some patches and stuff here could really smooth out and get rid of that. If they would fix all those kind of major drops and like when we pan, we stay 38, 39 FPS there, that would actually be pretty good and it would make frame gen a good bit better. So definitely a lot of potential for them to get this straightened out. But I was surprised on the claw how much better it ran, didn't crash at all, of course does have a new driver and was able to keep me over 30 FPS more often with these settings than any of the other devices um, before they were crashing or giving me problems there so 
Definitely make sure you're using the newest driver from Intel on your claw if you're uh, playing this game. It is the most stable. Again, no crashes for me in a couple hours I put in, and it is giving me the better performance. We'll kick frame gen back in here, and again, I think it feels fine on this device. It may not um, help the image quality and all that, of course, but we are on a smaller 8-inch display, and I do think it's pretty playable. So, but the good thing is, with the claw, I think whether you want to go frame gen or no frame gen, you can probably get away with it, and just start adjusting the settings how you want, either lower or higher than the low preset and medium textures I have here. Now, I did go ahead and just throw the medium preset on for a second just to be like, what, what's this going to do? And I put FSR on balance. And I just figured I would check that out real quick. And it's it's not great. It's going to definitely lower your performance. It's going to introduce a lot more stutter and issues as well. So kind of staying away from trying to up any settings or really increase anything. Uh, I just don't think it's worth it for what we're trying to get out of this game, which obviously is very difficult to run at launch. And these devices aren't necessarily made to run a lot of these games that are really difficult to run and we do have to do lower resolutions and upscaling and all kinds of things to get these playable so as of right now anyway just a full on medium preset isn't great when you get away from some of the populated stuff and turn frame gen on it's like kind of doable here but it's going to fall apart everywhere else so i really stayed with low or you would want to go lower if you're really trying to pull this off but anyways, that's Monster Hunter Wilds on all four devices. Hopefully the crashing will get fixed with driver updates. We're all sideload drivers and make some new videos for the Ally X and Legion Go. That might be good. And then I might do another video here on the claw uh, as well, showing some more settings. And of course, when patches come out that help performance and fix things up, we'll take a look at that. All right, guys, as always, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.